In the previous lecture, we had discussion on initial value theorem and in this lecture, we will understand final value theorem and this theorem is the 14th and last property of Laplace transform. I will give you the theorem first and then we will understand the conditions and finally, I will give you the proof of the theorem. So let's understand what is final value theorem. Let's say there is a time domain signal ft and this signal is having the Laplace transform equal to fs. Now the final value of the time domain signal ft which is the value of signal ft when t is equal to infinity this means f infinity is equal to limit s is tending to zero s multiplied to the Laplace transform fs. So this is known as final value theorem and we can write f infinity as limit t is tending to infinity the time domain signal ft. So this is our final value theorem and now we will understand what are the conditions which must be satisfied to use this theorem. The condition number one is same as the condition we had in the initial value theorem. According to this condition, the signal ft must be equal to zero when t is less than zero. And we will check this condition only when the region of convergence is given. When region of convergence is not given, we will assume the condition is satisfied. Now we will move to the second condition which is an important condition. It is important because every time when you use the final value theorem, this condition you have to check first. According to this condition, SFS, SFS must have all the poles in the left half of the S-plane. So if this is the S-plane, then all the poles of SFS must lie in the left half of the S-plane. So whenever you are about to use the final value theorem, check condition number two. If ROC is given, also check condition number one. So this is all about the conditions we are having in final value theorem. And now we will prove the final value theorem. In the previous lecture, we saw the time domain signal DFT over DT is having the unilateral Laplace transform equal to SFS minus F0 minus. This means, this means this unilateral Laplace transform is the output and this time domain signal here is the input. And we know the unilateral Laplace transform which is SFS minus F0 minus in our case is equal to integration 0 minus to infinity the time domain signal which is DFT over DT multiplied to the integral kernel which is e power minus st. So this is what we have and now we will apply limit s tending to zero on both the sides. This will give us limit s tending to zero s fs minus limit s tending to zero f zero minus equal to integration 0 minus to infinity limit s tending to 0 dft over dt is not having any term of s. So even after applying the limit on this term we will get the same term. So we will write it as it is dft over dt but the integral kernel is having s Therefore, we will apply limit as tending to zero on integral kernel and we will observe what will be the change in the kernel. e power minus st dt when s is tending to zero, e power minus st will tend to one. So we have limit s tending to zero as fs f0 minus is not having any term of s, it is a value 
and uh, therefore limit s tending to 0 will not affect the result it will remain same which is f 0 minus and it is equal to integration from 0 minus to infinity dft over dt dft over dt because e power minus st due to limit became 1 and we know the integration of dft over dt is equal to ft so in the next step we have limit s tending to 0 s fs minus f 0 minus equal to ft the lower limit of integration is 0 minus and the upper limit is infinity so we can write f infinity or in place of f infinity we can write limit t tending to infinity ft so we will write limit t tending to infinity ft and now we will put 0 minus this will give us f 0 minus and on the left hand side we have limit s s tending to 0 s f s minus f 0 minus now compare the left hand side and the right hand side you will find there is minus f 0 minus this makes limit s tending to 0 s f s equal to limit t tending to infinity f t so limit s tending to 0 s f s equal to limit t tending to infinity f t so in this way we have clearly proved our final value theorem you can see we have the same thing here as the final result so remember this theorem and if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one